Welcome to the Fun Astrology and Merriman Market Analyst Saturday Financial Podcast. I'm Thomas Miller. Thank you for joining us. This is the free weekly newsletter published every weekend on MMACycles.com by financial analyst and astrologer Ray Merriman, the man who basically created financial astrology and has been combining the sky and the market cycles for 50 years. In fact, He's in the process of writing his 49th annual forecast book. And in some of the upcoming days, I'm going to be playing you some excerpts from it on Fun Astrology. So we'll be exploring that together. It is going to be so significant this year. But let's dive into the newsletter here for the week beginning October 28th. And first of all, as always, taking a look back at the week past. And a quote from Dr. Paul Donovan from the UBS Morning Comment on October 25th, who said, Political bias will also distort the economic data. Republicans think they are living in Weimar, Germany. Democrats think inflation is under control. End quote. Now Ray's comments. After reaching significant new yearly and all-time highs the prior week, many global stock indices fell last week. In Asia and the Pacific Rim, there were no cases of making new multi-week highs last week. In fact, most were down. An example was India's Nifty Index, which completed its all-time high four weeks ago on September 27th. Since that time, it has been in decline with its lowest mark occurring on Friday at its lowest level in 11 weeks. In Europe, most indices completed their recent highs between October 17th and 21st. Then they spent most of last week in a rather quiet decline. Perhaps investors there are waiting for the U.S. election to see if Trump wins and lives up to his rhetoric of placing a 10 to 20 percent tariff on everybody. They won't like that. In the United States, it was a mixed bag. The Nasdaq cash market finally made a new all-time high intraday on Friday, but neither the S&P nor the Dow Jones Industrials could take out their all-time high from the prior week. Thus, a case of intermarket bearish divergence persists as we head into the November 5th election. And in the past, stock indices have made major or primary cycle lows going into or shortly after those elections in recent cases. That would be within two weeks or November 18th this year. In other markets, gold soared to yet another new all-time high of 2772.60 on October 23rd. Silver also made a new multi-year high of 3507 on October 22nd, 23rd. The pullback in both has been modest into the end of the week, so there is no sign yet that the highs are in. In fact, there may not be an astrological signature of a major trend reversal before Mars and Neptune change direction on December 6th and 7th. Traders may want to note that we will plan our next options webinar with Derek Pania that weekend in anticipation of that important critical reversal date zone. Crude oil had a modest rally last week following a low on October 18th. Bitcoin followed the lead of the stock indices, topping out at 68,487 on October 21st, and then modestly pulling back to the 65,000 area support zone late in the week. With next week's new moon in Scorpio, this could be an important reversal week for Bitcoin. Now, the short term geocosmics and longer term thoughts. And a quote from CNBC.com on Friday, October 25th. German finance minister Christian Lindner on Friday warned that if the U.S. kicked off a trade war with the European Union, there could be retaliation. He said, quote, trade controversy never sees winners, only losers. Lindner told CNBC's Karen So on the sidelines of the International Monetary Fund's annual meeting in Washington, D.C., Trump has floated the idea that if he were elected, blanket tariffs of 10 to 20 percent could be imposed on almost all imports, no matter where they came from, end quote. Then from Saturday's Wall Street Journal, Peggy Noonan says, whatever the outcome of the election, at least half of the country will feel crushed. Voters feel they are faced with a bad choice, and many millions will vote against, not for. Everyone is afraid the other side will destroy the country. If it turns out, as close as the polls say, we feel a harrowing post-election time marked by accusations and aggression, 
with nothing clear and everything bitter. Neither of these parties is worthy of us. Both this year failed us. End quote. Now, Ray's thoughts as we bring in November this week. He says one of our favorite aspects to trade is coming up on Monday when Venus will form a 90-degree square to Saturn. Our rule for this is to buy any market making a corrective decline into this period, plus or minus two trading days. The Dow Jones Industrial Average appears to be doing that, as do several other global stock indices. As far as financial market sectors ruled by Venus, we would also be looking at copper and soybeans, which could also form at least trading cycle lows here. Next week, the sky will exhibit a new moon in Scorpio on Friday, November 1st. Scorpio rules debt and borrowing with a tendency to over-leverage and run into cash shortages. This particular new moon may be important because the two planets that co-rule Scorpio, Mars and Pluto, will be in opposition on November 3rd, just two days before the U.S. election. In terms of financial markets, this might correspond to downside pressure in Bitcoin and Ethereum. In terms of politics, this same combination may incite anger and even violence. Security will need to be tighter than usual at polling centers, but also in regard to cyber attacks, as Pluto is on the cusp of Capricorn and Aquarius. Aquarius rules computers. Pluto and Scorpio can represent the attempt to penetrate security. The election itself has seen a major surge of support for President Donald Trump. It appears that the transit of stationary Jupiter close to his natal sun is, quote-unquote, trumping Jupiter near Kamala Harris's natal ascendant. It may also be a cosmic issue of transiting Pluto square Vice President Harris's natal sun-Mercury midpoint, given that Mercury is her ruling planet, and in her natal chart is in very early Scorpio, the sign of Pluto's rulership. Pluto can turn people against you if you don't surrender to their demands for transparency. It seems that the public wants her to reveal, Pluto, Scorpio, more information, Mercury, about her policies and plans, as if she has some kind of a hidden agenda, Pluto, Scorpio, where she says one thing but really means something else. Or she avoids answering questions directly before trying to redirect her answer to focus on Mr. Trump's faults. Will that work? It hasn't so far. And as Peggy Noonan stated in her Wall Street Journal column this week, voters feel they are faced with a bad choice and many millions will vote against, not for. From the astrological view, we noted in our recent presentation in Tucson two weeks ago, that in every case since 1986, the party in office during a 20-year Jupiter-Saturn waxing square was re-elected, seven consecutive cases. This would favor Ms. Harris. Also, according to Ian Salisbury, in a recent article with Barron's Magazine, he pointed out that if the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up over the 11 weeks leading into an election, the incumbent party usually wins. 22 of 24 cases, going back to 1928. This also favors Harris as long as the Dow Jones Industrial Average remains above 39,765 on Election Day. However, there has been only one case in history where a former president lost an election and then came back the next election cycle to win. That was Grover Cleveland, who won the election of 1884 lost in 1888, then came back to win again in 1892. The major transit suggesting that comeback was Jupiter in opposition to Uranus, an aspect associated with change or an upset. In 2024, Jupiter formed a conjunction to Uranus, very similar to the opposition in terms of its relationship to comebacks and upsets. I also pointed out recently that whoever held the lead most of the time between September 15th through October 15th often lost the election, especially in the 21st century. Harris was in the lead in most of the polls during this time. Now she's falling back in the past two weeks. Thus, these two studies favor a Trump victory. 
This is why it is close and may come right down to the wire, even though both parties were recently, and may still be, predicting a landslide. It may also come down to another split between the popular vote and the Electoral College. This, too, would be the nature of a year in which a major Uranus transit was highlighted. An important question to ask is, which gender will be most energized to actually vote? Harris has had a large lead over Trump with women, as signified by transiting Uranus in trine aspect to the U.S. natal moon, women, in the July 2, 1776 chart of the nation. Trump has a wide lead with men over Harris, perhaps related to his natal sun conjunct Mars, men, in the United States chart. Which gender will turn out the greatest number of voters? And will the difference between the two be enough to carry one side to victory over the other? On election day itself, the moon will change signs from Sagittarius, of optimism and confidence, to Capricorn, doubts and worries. It may start out one way and end up another. And that concludes this week's column. Thank you so much for listening. We have a big week ahead on Fun Astrology. Level up tomorrow night, a special birthday episode. Whose birthday? Come check us out at 8 o'clock tomorrow night on the Fun Astrology podcast channel and find out. We'll see you then and then back on the podcast on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for listening.